Okay, just putting a live bait down. You can see some fish on the sound already around 20 to 30 meters. Tighten the tension up so that it comes out of the clip without too much slack. Another nice day on the water. The week before Christmas, slow trolling live baits again. Got one on the downrigger at about 20 metres and I've got one on the surface on the left here. Trolling around the corner of a ledge. I've got a south to north current running. Hopefully there's some fish pushed up against the ledge. Just got to dodge a few boats in the area and uh, let's see if we get a hook up. We are on. A couple of minutes that took. Come on. Oh, it feels like a good fish too. He's popped me. What? Might have got shark then. Damn it. Got bitten off. What the hell? Well, I just had a good hook up there in a couple of minutes and got bitten off straight away. So I've got to re rig quickly and get another one down there. We are on. Come on. Come on. Stay connected. Oh, I lost another one. What the f is going on? I can't believe that. Two hits and two bite offs. I had one really long leader, a shorter leader. Both got bitten off. I'm not sure if it's a pack attack. The fish is definitely not turning on itself, so I'm not sure what's happening at the moment. Just got to persevere and hopefully get another bite. Yeah, we've hooked up. Got to get this one to the boat. Come on. Tension on him. Just run back towards me. Come on. What have we got? What the hell is this? It's not a cobia, is it? It is another cobia. Where are the Spanish? Putting a lot of work into this. For not much reward at the moment. Oh, that's a good fish. <laughs> I didn't expect that one to go off while I'm just idling along here, sorting out rigs. That is a good fish. Could be a cobia. First run was like a Spanish. I was just fixing that down rig. I'm about to put a new rig on and just drifting. Another cobia. Mate, that is all there is around here at the moment. Cobes. This is not a bad one, this one. All right, come on, mate. There's a reasonable size cove. Oh, there we go. Oh, they got some muscle, these guys, for their size. <laughs> a reasonable fish. Just with the floating livey out the back, he came up really high, this guy. My bait was only in the top two meters. So these guys are feeding high in the water column. Prefer to catch a Spanish at the moment, but um, slim pickings. So we'll have to take a cove instead.
Yep, we're on. We're going to hit it then. Yeah. That is a fish on the turn. Probably going to be another cobia, I would suspect. Bomb is up. Oh, it's a good fish. It's got some weight to it. Much better quality fish. Yeah, that's a good sized cove, I reckon. Well, we got five hits on the downrigger this morning, so it's a good result so far. Missed a couple of fish. I reckon they were coves. Be good if this was a mackerel species. Swimming down, which is unusual, but you never know. There's a lot of coves in the area at the moment, so that's my number one suspect. Here it comes. Oh, turn the boat on him. There you go, another cobia. Loads of these guys around at the moment. Looks pretty gracious there, swimming in the water. Pretty similar size to the last one. All right, we'll get him in for a look. I'll keep your head up and keep you swimming, and you won't complain as much. Ah, that's got him. There he is, cove number two, or number three. See where the stinger rig's so effective. This time it got in by the hook. Last time it was the hook and the treble. It's a reasonable size cove. They're not massive fish. These guys get pretty big, 20 plus kilos. So just a reasonable fun size on the downrigger. Getting a bit of practice before the Spanish show up. Fun session on the downrigger this morning. Um, just refining the technique, but it was good to get four or five bites. I think it was five bites in the end. Uh, lost two, got three. But um, yeah, it's getting better each time I come out. We just got to get those Spanish mackerel to rock up in the same spot where the cobia are pretty much dominating at the moment. So just a matter of uh, days, if not, you know, next couple of weeks, they should show up in the same area. There's been a few kayakers getting them, so it means that they're not far away in numbers. So I'm going to head in while the conditions are really good and, um, you know, set up some rigs and get ready to come back out in a couple of days' time. Okay, out again. The weather's just been too good. We've had lots of good days. Can't say the fishing's been amazing. A lot of cobia around at the moment. There is a few Spanish, so I've got a mate on board today. Tom, he got one yesterday, so he's going to show me exactly where and how he got it. He trolls garries around, uh, which I don't do a lot of, actually. I very rarely put dead baits out, so... I'm going to learn from the young fella today, that's what fishing's all about, and um, he's going to teach me how to slow troll garries. I've got some uh, little bonitos and slimy mackerels rigged up that I caught the other day. So we're going to switch between some baits, go to a couple of different spots and see if we can raise a fish. So um, Tom's getting set up now with a couple of garries there, and um, we'll get him in the water and see if we can get a fish. So whilst Tom's doing some rigging down the back here, he's going to show me how to rig up one of these garfish that are so super effective. And um, the moment, we're just trolling around the bait school and trolling at two knots with one gar on the surface and another gar down at 10 to 15 meters. So I'm just going to do a circle in this area and keep going around the same area where I'm seeing the bait on the sounder. Really important to have your sounder set up right. So I've got, I've dropped the gain back a bit so I've got less clutter so I can see those fish up high. I've got bait schools sitting between 15 and 25 metres um, and the occasional fish coming up high for a feed. That's exactly the kind of thing we want to see on the sounder. It's like a school of pelagics coming through. Open the gill plate, get your big hook, and then you're pretty much threading it on like a plastic. All the way down, trying to get down to his bum. Just got to straighten the boat for a sec. Okay. Interesting. He's 
we just push him on. Is that a technique that you learned down south? I wish. <laughs> Where did you learn that technique? Um, pretty much from just travelling. A lot of travelling and just talking to different people. And then, yeah, just more and more you keep doing it. Keep talking. You can't just get stuck in the same way. Slide that sinker up into the gill, just like that. Nice. And then we just want to pop that up through his nose. Vertical wire, hold him in place. Yep, wire will hold him in place. Rubber band or... Hang on a sec, mate. I'm just doing circles here. And a rubber band on him. And it'll just be a rubber band around that, tie him on, and then you blow a skirt over the front. Brilliant. And that's him ready to roll. Simple rig, but really effective, mate. Very good. Awesome. I love learning fishing tips from the young fellas. <laughs> Come on. Okay, the right side gar has gone off. It's not a big fish. It's gone down deep, so I don't know what it is. It's not pulling any drag. I don't know what the hell that is. Oh, yep. I got a feeling. Could be a little shark. What is it? <laughs> oh, no, bring him up. Oh, it is a little spano. Spanish or spotty? Awesome. And that's the quietest um, spano bite ever. It's a spotty or a big spotty? Oh, no, it's a spano. Bring up the gaff, I reckon, yeah. Nice one, mate. Very good. All right, I'll bring him for the headshot. Oh, wait, 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 wait. All right. There we go. Take a punt, find the bait, and it pays off. I didn't expect that so soon, to be honest. Okay, here comes a headshot. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, you're gonna get a shot now. Oh, Tommy. <laughs> Hang on, wait, 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 wait. We got him. Well done. Oh, he's not actually in. I'll grab the tail. Got him. Righto. Ready for him to pop yep. him out. There you go. There we go. Spanish on a trolled gar. Round the bait schools. Didn't take long. Well done, Tom. That was your rig. Thank you. Thanks for bringing him on the boat. Sorry about the gaffing. Interesting how he took the top one and not the one on the downrigger. So, um, there we go. First Spanish for the season for us. And um, we'll get another bait out, I reckon, and see if there's any more in this area. Fantastic. Oh. Okay, bring him in. Yep. That means we've got the other one out still. Well, we just increased the speed of the trolling by about one to two knots. Kind of just doubled our speed and literally within 10 minutes got a bite, but unfortunately got a bite off. So we're not using the downrigger now, we're just using two baits up high and unfortunately just uh, got, a, got us in front of the hook on that one, but um, Tom's gonna re-rig another gas straight away and we'll go over that same spot again. But yeah, just going that little bit faster entice the bite then. It was interesting that last bite was pretty much, we, we stayed in this area because we knew we had a moon set at around five to ten, uh, yeah, five to nine. So we pretty much had that last bite just after moon set, which to me would conclude that it was a moon set bite. So we always keep an eye on the different cycles of the moon, moon set, moon rise, moon up, moon down, and they can sometimes coincide with, with um, a bit of an active bite. And in that case, definitely prove the theory right, unless it was just completely random. That's fishing. He's fucking real close to the boat. What is that? Schoolie. <laughs> wow, just thought I'd try the jig out. Oh, he's going around. And kept seeing some fish going to the boat. Sure enough, little schoolie mackerel. What a surprise. Throw a jig out enough times and eventually you'll catch something if they're around. He's only a little guy. 50? 
Yeah, he's 50, I reckon. <laughs> and they're hard to hold, and off he goes. Quick release. <laughs> well, there we go. Might have another cast, because I reckon there's some bigger fish around. Sharky, I reckon. <laughs> Sharks like light gear, too. <laughs> uh, I'll have a play with him for a while. Mate, how long did that take? I literally just changed rigs to lighter gear, 20 pound, and threw that pilly in. <laughs> and within like 20 seconds, line was peeling off. Close the bail arm, and we've got something heavy. And I don't think it's a mackerel. <laughs> well, we'll just test some gear out and head towards New Zealand. Rod's taking most attention. Not the first time I've fought one of these guys. <laughs> uh, I am not getting anywhere here. Bye bye. <laughs> well, I'm not going to stay and fight sharks, so we'll just call it quits. Got the Spanish mackerel for some uh, Christmas steaks on the barbie. So I'm going to head back in, have a swim, have a cold beer. Thanks to Tom and his uh, gar rigs today, it was successful. We got one, got another bite off, then we missed a couple of slow trolling liveys. So it's just good to mix up the different techniques and get better at them and see what they want to eat and what they don't want to eat. So it's always about experimenting and trying out new things and uh, finding out what works, refining rigs, and um, yeah, just getting better at different types of fishing so you can improve your um, techniques and, and your catch rates. So, righto mate, I think that's us, there's storms all the way around us, so we're going to head in and um, have a swim and have a beer. Sounds good to me. Righto, thanks for watching the channel guys, if you like it, subscribe below. Have a good Christmas and New Year.